I'm Katie Nastro, and this is The Beat, the only web series sailing you on and offshore and, well, wherever the wind may take us. We're here in Newport, Rhode Island for the epic Volvo Ocean Race, a 40,000 nautical mile circumnavigation of the globe. We got the chance to speak with some of the sailors about their experiences, the good, the bad, and, well, just how it feels to have your face pretty much everywhere. How does it feel walking in and seeing your face like in a, on a gigantic poster? I mean, people are just like, Charlie, yeah. sign my poster! You know, this is crazy. How does, it, how does that feel? It's, uh, it's pretty surreal. You know, it's very, it's very humbling. Uh, just to be able to do the Volvo Ocean Race is uh, a privilege, really. You know, we're very fortunate. Uh, it's great to be home. It's great to bring the Volvo home. At some levels, Volvo really likes the concept of having this in a big city. But I think what they're finding out is the passion that a sailing town or sailing city can outweigh that big city feel for, for an event. Newport is, is very special and it's some place where everyone wants to go to. It's quite an amazing experience, you know, I think this race is, yeah, one of the, the toughest things you could do in the sport and to have a chance to be a part of it is quite amazing and then um, to do it with a group of really talented, strong women is, uh, is yeah, I'm not sure there's something uh, else more challenging to do in the world. Team SCA, how does it feel to be in an all-female boat? Awesome. Yeah. Yes. I actually am not looking forward to the end of this race when I'll be uh, going and sailing with groups of men. Just being in the Southern Ocean and just every now and then just looking off the back of the boat and seeing the size of the waves and just you know, that's what this race is all about. You know, you get to go downwind for thousands of miles with no lured mark, no turning back. So we've definitely spent more days on the water than we have on land, so being on land almost feels weird, weird yeah. and being on the boat feels more normal. You, you feel a lot more uh, at home on the boat than uh, than you ever would have thought. You know, you're, you're offshore, you're left to your own devices, you only have a certain amount of things and a lot of it's just like being on a space shuttle. You know, what you got is what you got. We spent a lot of time talking about what we're going to do when we get back to land on the boat, especially the last couple of days. And, uh, you know, I think the highlights are always a beer and a burger to start with. You miss all the normal things. I miss, you know, even down to my playlist being updated, my country playlist. I have Spotify and my songs get pretty old. Hot shower. Uh, girls girls yeah. you miss. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't going to say it. Yeah, yeah, no, I got to miss girls. I mean, you're on a boat with nine guys. I don't mind going without because, you know, I know that those those things will be there in yeah. 20 days, so I almost kind of enjoy the fact that that life is really simple while we're out there. Would you sign my poster? <laughs> <laughs> Has anybody ever told you you look like uh, the Bachelor, like uh, the last Bachelor? Uh, no, nobody's ever told Spitting me that. Spitting image. Yeah. yeah. You could put, you know, I heart you across the top. Yeah, it's it's nice to get back in the land and sleep on a bed, but then what's funny is you spend so much time thinking about down in the boat, and then after a couple of days, you're almost ready to get back out there a little yeah, bit. Yeah, so. you're not always thinking about, you know, those things, and you're not always thinking about land. Most of the time, you're always thinking about, you know, how to make the boat go faster, or what the conditions are, what's going to happen ahead, or how can we get around these guys, or how can we stick with them. For me, the, the people you're with is really what makes or breaks this experience, and uh, I think we're really fortunate to have good people involved in our team. We, we have a very happy boat, so it's, it's almost to... Uh, it's almost a flaw of ours because we're having so much fun that you got to remember we we got to keep our head down and race the boat as hard as possible. Yeah. Um, we end up telling too many jokes and having too good of a laugh. Well, I think it's it's something that other young sailors can aspire to to know that you know you have opportunities out there. You don't have to start sailing when you're five years old. You know you can kind of pick it up later in life. I didn't start sailing till I was 24. And I, you know, I've been sailing for five years and I'm on the women's Volvo team, so it just kind No of big deal. <laughs> <laughs> so we're here today at the Combat Wounded and Injured Veterans Regatta that's being sponsored by MetLife. And this is the first time there's been a regatta with veterans during any stopover of the Volvo Ocean Race. So we're super excited about that. And uh, one of the reasons behind it was that we wanted to highlight what he, we here in the United States are doing for our veterans who serve us and protect our freedoms by using sailing as a vehicle to help them heal and reintegrate socially and uh, learn a lifetime sport that they can do forever. My biggest recovery was adaptive sports. And uh, I had a friend of mine that we met through a, an adaptive sports program that told me about this event that was going on in Galveston, Texas. It was a sailing boot camp. 
Um, so we did one week of nothing but sailing and none of us have ever been on the water before in our lives. Oh, wow. <laughs> and then the following week was a regatta. Well, during the regatta, um, our team took, well, the three of us on our schooner took um, first place and then in the Paralympic we took second. We're just thrilled. We're thrilled about the event, we're thrilled about the turnout, and it really has translated into uh, you know, the non-sailing community being fully fired up about coming down and seeing Evolve Ocean Race. That's it for this episode of The Beat. Tune in next time when we get a bird's eye view of Fagawi. See you on Nantucket. <laughs>